joining us now to shed some perspective on this recent terrorist attack, Dr. Larry Regans from the counter, he's a counterterrorism expert from the OU Center for Intelligence and Security. Dr. Regans, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome, Ariel. It's uh, really unfortunate that once again we have to meet in the aftermath of such a horrific, barbaric act, but delighted to uh, try to answer your questions. Thank you so much. Uh, this terrorist attack is shocking not only because of the number of people killed, now more than 80 people are dead and two Americans we know, but also shocking because of the method used to kill in this case. Are we going to see this kind of crude style of terrorism more and more often? I, I think it's uh, very, very likely. If you think about it, uh, you know, harken back to, uh, to uh, the use of trucks certainly is not new. Uh, the use of trucks even as, uh, as ramming attacks. That's happened uh, over 40 times in Israel, for example, uh, since uh, 2015. The big difference in this attack, though, was really it, it truly was a large-scale mass casualty incident. Uh, you had almost 100 people to date who have died, uh, 50 that remain as of this morning in critical condition, uh, upwards of uh, perhaps 200 who have been injured, people missing. And so if you think about it, for the first time, it was really a large truck without a bomb. So unlike Oklahoma City, where it was a truck bomb, this is something that though uh, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, they've been calling for this in the past, and now we see it coming to fruition. And that driver drove for about a mile, plowing through crowds and crowds of people. The suspect in this case is said to be a French national with Tunisian origin. Can France, other countries around the world, even the United States, stop attacks from within? Uh, it's, it's extremely difficult at best. In fact, if we look at the, at the evidence, the answer is uh, no. If someone's really committed to attacking, uh, unless uh, word gets out before, very difficult for the word to get out before, tends to happen. I mean, you can look at, uh, you know, Timothy McVeigh. You can look at the Orlando shooting by uh, Mateen. You can look at uh, San Bernardino and on and on and on. And so quite simply, you need to distinguish, though, between the individuals who are, in fact, uh, native born in the country. In this case, this person wasn't born in uh, France, but he had French, citizen, uh, French nationality. Uh, you look at the Belgian case, the other ones, and so, you know, there's a difference between the individuals who come from overseas like 9-11 and were not U.S. nationals and the individuals who have uh, legal rights to be here. Is there a way to stem the tide of terrorist recruitment, both on the Internet and through other different mediums, uh, so that we can try to tamp down these kinds of attacks? Really tough, not not impossible. And in fact, the government has active measures in that area. You know, we've had aggressive campaigns going on for what's called uh, counter messaging or counter radicalization. The tricky thing is is compare the U.S. to France. Okay, France has been under uh, a state of emergency uh, really since the uh, Bataclan attacks. Uh, ironically, that was going to be suspended in two weeks right after the Tour de France. It's now been extended for another three months. And, you know, they had Nice itself, uh, a lot of security there. I mean, one of the things they, and this is not to second guess them, but certainly if you look at New York, if you look at Washington, uh, one of the things they do is they, they extend the perimeter further out. The same thing is true in London. So it would have been very difficult for a Adding large... Adding more layers Well, of actually, actually preventing the entry of large trucks like that uh, into, uh, into uh, the central area of New York or the central area of Washington when you have special events like our 4th of July. Uh, London, same thing. Uh, so probably one thing you will see is calls uh, to extend the security perimeter further out to try to protect uh, soft targets. We saw that after 9-11 in front of the White House. They don't allow cars to pass by right in front of uh, 1600 Pennsylvania anymore. Um, I want to ask you this. ISIS has praised this attack, has said that they approve of it, but they have not claimed responsibility for this. And they did the same after the Orlando massacre. Why are we seeing ISIS reticent to accept responsibility for these kinds of attacks? Well, I think what you're seeing is the difference between something that's, that's ISIS directed, where you have an individual who he or she is in fact an ISIS operative versus an individual who's been inspired. Uh, with what's available so far, it looks like this is a person who was inspired, uh, certainly by, uh, by the uh, 
uh, jihadist movement. But what are they afraid of in taking responsibility? Even if this is a, a lone wolf, he's done their bidding for them. Why wouldn't they claim responsibility for this? I, I, I don't think they're afraid uh, of claiming responsibility. I think what they're doing is stepping back and saying, you know, this is somebody that uh, we praise, we laud. And in fact, uh, not long ago, as, as they became under increasing uh, attacks in their in their home territory within the caliphate they've lost ground one of the things they said was stay where you are use whatever you can and attack on your own so that's an inspirational message probably the big the big issue with isis moving forward a big issue not the only one is you have a large number of individuals uh, Tunisia, in fact, was the, was the largest source of foreign fighters to ISIS, as you know, Ariel. Uh, France within Europe, the largest source. Belgium, a large number. And if you're inside Europe, okay, and if you have a European passport, you have, in fact, visa-free travel both within Europe, but also to the United States. And so one of the real concerns that's bubbling up is the idea that people who in fact are even inspired, let alone the foreign fighters who've come back to Europe, uh, what havoc are they gonna wreck? And it only takes, unfortunately, a truck like this. Um, I, I wanna ask you this as well. The Republican National Convention, the Democratic National Convention right around the bend, are we gonna see heightened security? Just anecdotally, we heard that there were troopers that were patrolling outside of the, the uh, convention center saying that they would rather be in Fallujah than they would be outside of the Republican National Convention because of fears of racial tensions around the country and now terrorism. Well, well put. In fact, uh, what, what already occurred is hospitals, major hospitals in both Cleveland and in uh, Philadelphia have done drills, exercises to prepare uh, for events. And this was even before the terrorism outbreak. So, you know, if you look at this, uh, good probability that you're going to see heightened security in the U.S., heightened security in Europe. And in fact, the next big event that's going to occur in France is on Sunday the 24th. You have the end of the Tour uh, de France. Major, major event, not just for France, but for Europe. Uh, they end up right on the Champs de Lisee. Uh, you, you've always had large presence of security there. That's gonna be amplified. And so I think those kinds of events, you know, London, they've already, they've already had a special meeting of, of uh, Prime Minister May's cabinet uh, to discuss security there. Same things happening in the U.S. Dr. Larry Regan's counterterrorism expert, we appreciate your insight. And unfortunately, it's under circumstances like this that we really need light shed on these kind of uh, situations.